Hi, and welcome to Your Inspirations. I'm Mary Beth Temple from Hooked for Life Publishing, and we're going to take a closer look at my new friend, Bridget the Giraffe. Now you can make Bridget using a Red Heart Amigurumi Crochet Kit, and everything you need to make her is included in the kit, except for a pair of scissors and your knowledge of crochet. Now it comes with everything you could need. You have your pattern, your stuffing, your main color of yarn, we have our handy dandy crochet hook, a locking stitch marker, a yarn needle, a darker brown contrast for the tips of her horns and her spots, and some black so we can embroider on her face. So let's jump right in and learn how to make Bridget the Giraffe. The first thing we're going to make is a leg, and we're going to make two the same, and the only difference is leg one, we're going to fasten off the yarn at the end, and leg two, we're not. So we're going to start this with a magic ring, and to make a magic ring, you leave the cut end of your yarn over your hand. We call that the tail yarn, and the yarn that's attached to the ball or the skein is working yarn. And we're going to take this yarn, the working yarn, we're going to put it over our index finger, under the middle finger, and you can see I've spread them out a little bit so I have some space to work. And then I'm going to bring it back over my index finger, and then I use one of my other fingers to just hold it down in the back, but that's so you can see it neatly. You don't have to go too crazy. Then I'm going to take my hook, I'm going under this leg of the X, grabbing that leg of the X and pulling it through, and now I have a loop on my hook, and I am ready to roll. So I'm going to make sure that I'm crocheting with my working yarn, and not the tail. And it says chain one, nine single crochet in ring. So I'm going to single crochet like I normally would, but instead of inserting my hook in a stitch, I'm inserting it right in the ring. So I'm putting it in the ring, yarn over and drop a loop, I have two loops on my hook, one, two, I'm going to yarn over and draw through two. That's a single crochet. So in the next area, we're going back into that ring, yarn over and draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, that's two, and we're going to keep going until we have nine single crochets in that ring. All right, I have my nine single crochets in the ring. I'm going to grab the tail yarn. So I'm holding loosely onto the stitches that I've made. I want to keep them from getting away from me, but I don't want to hold them so tight that that tail yarn won't, won't come through. And I'm tugging, 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 really super tight. And now I have my round. I have all of my nine stitches forming a round. And I'm always going to take my locking stitch marker and put it in the last stitch of the round. This way, I know where my round begins and ends because sometimes when you're making a piece like this with lots and lots of rounds, it's easy to get confused and not remember where you started. For round two, three, four, and five, all we're going to do is single crochet in each stitch around. So I'm going into the next stitch. I'm inserting my hook under both legs of the stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. So I'm making my single crochets the exact same way I did when we were working in the ring, except now we're working in a stitch like we most often do. So I'm going into the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, and I'm going to do this all the way around. So I'm going to do a total of five rounds. Okay, here's my first leg. And here's my second leg. And now we're going to join the two legs and work the body and head. So it says working on the second leg, and the second leg is just the one that we didn't fasten the yarn off. It says chain five, and I'm going to recommend that you do this a little bit loosely, not super loosey-goosey, but you're going to have to work into this chain in a little bit, so you want it to be easy to get into. Two, five. So there is my chain five. It says working on the first leg, so that's the one I already did. 
single crochet in the sixth stitch made. Now, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I don't know how important it is that it's the sixth one, but let's just go with what the pattern says. So that's my last stitch of the round. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So there is my sixth stitch in the round, and I'm going to put a single crochet right in there. Now it says single crochet in each of next eight stitches. So there were nine on here. I've already worked in one, so I don't really have to count. I'm just going to single crochet in each stitch around. So I have completed nine stitches going around the first leg. So now it says working in the chain five, single crochet in the, each of the next five chains. So let's talk about this a little bit. I like to work in the back or the bump of the chain in instances where I have to work in the chain twice because it gives me a nice edge to work in later. So most of us, when we were taught to crochet, were taught to work into the front or the V. But you see these little bumps in the back? They work just as well, if not better, and leave you a nice edge to work into later. So I'm going to pull that bump up with my hook, and it's a tiny bit fiddly but it does make life easier later. And I'm going to go ahead and make my single crochet and I'm gonna do that all the way across the chain. There is my fifth bump. And now I'm going, it's a single crochet in each of the next nine single crochets. So that is the nine single crochets that I had made with my second leg. So I'm just going to single crochet around. When I come up to the last stitch on this second leg, I'm going to go ahead and take that stitch marker out and put my single crochet in there. Now the next thing I have to do is single crochet again in each of those five chains. But do you see how nice and neat this edging is? And that's because I put my single crochets in the back bump. So it might have been a little fiddly going in that direction. But going back in this direction, it's super easy because I set myself up for success. So I'm going to go ahead and put one in each of those five chains and then that is the end of the round and I'm going to put my stitch marker in that last stitch that I have made so I know where my round ends. So here are my little legs all joined up and I have 28 stitches in my round now. That is the nine stitches from one leg, the nine stitches from the other leg, and ten stitches in the middle, five on each side of the chain five. I'm going to go ahead and mark the last stitch of the round. And now for the next 12 rounds, that's rounds two through 13, all I'm going to do is single crochet in each stitch around. Here we are with all 13 rounds completed. We have our little feet. <laughs> And it's going to tell us to stuff the legs. And the reason we want to stuff as we go is because as the piece gets taller, it's kind of hard to reach down there and make sure that um, you can reach all in there with the stuffing. Now, when you open your package, you're going to go, this does not look like a lot of stuffing. But you can see as the air hits it, it's going to expand and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so you really have plenty of stuffing and it is not a thing you need to worry about. I have made a million of these things and I have never ever run out. So I like to take a little little handful at a time and spread it all out. And I'm going to go ahead and stuff, but I want to make sure that I get some down into the legs because again it's just going to be super hard to reach down in there later. So for round 14 it says single crochet in the, each of the next five stitches and then single crochet decrease. And we're going to do that repetition four times. So we're going to single crochet in each of the next five stitches. It's one, five, and then we're going to make a single crochet decrease. And to do that, we're going to insert our hook in the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. So I have two loops on my hook, just like a regular single crochet. But now I'm going to insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. I have three loops on my hook, one, two, three. I'm going to yarn over and draw through all three loops on my hook. So I've taken two stitches 
and turn them into one, which is a decrease. So once again, I'm going to do single crochet in each of the next five, five, and then a single crochet decrease, insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, I have three loops on my hook, one, two, three, yarn over and draw through all three. So we have done that two times, you will do that two more times. So we're going to keep going with rounds 15, 16, and 17, and it's the same style as what we did, and the decrease will be worked the same way, but the number of stitches between the de decreases is going to change. So we're going to work four stitches and then do a decrease and do that all the way around. Then the next round will be three and do a decrease and go all the way around. And the next round will be two and do a decrease and go all the way around. And at that point, we'll be down to 12 stitches. So what we're doing is this section right here where the top of the body starts to curve in. And then we're going to work four rounds even. That's rounds 18 to 21 at which point we're going to start increasing and I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about increasing. I did also mean to make a note that it does say at the end of round 17 when you're down to 12 single crochets it's time to put more stuffing in the body and again we're doing it now while we can still reach. So reading round 22 it says increase in each stitch around and you're going to go from 12 stitches to 24. So all we're going to do to make an increase is to make two stitches in the same stitch. So there's one, and now I'm going to put my second one right in that same stitch. Moving on to the next stitch, one, and then a second one in the same stitch. We're going to do that all the way around. And then moving forward, reading the pattern, the subsequent rounds are going to have plain stitches between the increases. Earlier we had plain stitches between the decreases, so it's reading the pattern in the same idea. We're going to uh, single crochet in each of the next three stitches and then an increase, then four in an increase, um, and then we're going to have some work even rounds. That's rounds 25 to 32 where we single crochet in each stitch around, and then Rounds 33 to the end, 37, those are going to be decrease rounds while we close up the top of the head. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off my head, but I'm going to come back and show you the very end how you close that top up neatly. Of course, this is a gentle reminder that at the end of round 35, you want to stuff your head. All right, I have just finished round 37 and taken my stitch marker off and we're going to cut the yarn, so I'm going to leave a little bit. I want to leave a good four to six inches, so I have some to weave in, and I'm going to pull that strand out to finish it off and make sure it doesn't unravel. Now I'm going to thread this tail through the tapestry needle. What I like to do is sort of go down and up through the stitches. So down and up through those couple of stitches, down and up through the next one, because you can see those stitches kind of stretch out at the top. And that's because there's a lot of tension on them because we went all the way down to six stitches. So now that I have gone in and out of all of those stitches, I'm going to pull it super tight and that closes up my top. And then I'm just going to weave my end in, and that is more of an art than a science at this point. I want to make sure it does have a good amount of tail woven in, because again, there's going to be a little pressure in there, but I'm just taking the needle in and out some of the stitches. And then what I like to do at the end, oh, it doesn't want to come, here we go. <laughs> what I like to do at the end is go inside the work, and just come out a couple of inches of way, and what that does is it hides the tail inside in the stuffing and just makes it that much less likely to pull out. So here we have our legs and our head and our body. 
Now you're going to have to make the arms but there is nothing happening with those arms that we haven't done before. You're going to start with your magic ring and follow the instructions with the increases and then working even like we've been doing. You're going to make two arms. Ditto for the ears. There's nothing fancy going on there. It's just two rounds and you can follow along with the pattern starting with the magic ring. And lastly, the same thing for the muzzle. Now the one thing I do want to show you on camera is the horn because we're going to do that in two colors. So let's take a look at the horn. We're going to make two of these and we're going to start with our contrast color, color A, and we're going to make a magic ring. So let's go over that one more time. We're going to leave that cut end over our hand, spread out our index finger and middle finger, make our X, take our hook under one bar, grab that loop and pull it up. And now we're all set to get crocheting and we're going to chain one. and put nine single crochets right into that ring, just like we did when we started the legs. And just like we did before, we're gonna tug on that tail while holding onto the stitches loosely to pull our stitches into a round and place that marker on the last stitch of the round so I know what's going on. For round two, it says single crochet in each single crochet around. All right, we're going to change colors at the end of round two. Now it also says to stuff lightly. There's not much to stuff here, so this is what I'm going to do. For my last stitch of round two, I'm going to begin my stitch with my old color, and I'm going to do my last yarn over in my new color. And I'm gonna pull up a fold, maybe three, four inches from the end. I just wanna make sure I have enough tail there that it doesn't pull out and that's how I'm going to finish that stitch and that way I'm ready to keep going with my next color and I am in fact I'm going to put that locking stitch marker back. So I'm all set up to do round three. For round three we're going to single crochet in the next stitch and then do that single crochet decrease three times and again in the interest of not trying to weave in a tail so far inside a little piece that I can't reach it I'm going to crochet over the tail. So I'm going to single crochet in the next stitch and I'm holding that tail towards the back because I don't really want to see it. But I do want to crochet over it just enough that it doesn't come out. Single crochet decrease. We're going to put our hook in the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, and also in the next stitch and draw up a loop. I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over and draw through all three. So we're going to do that a total of three times. And you can see it's starting to cup up a little bit, so I'm going to try and get just the least little bit of stuffing in there. So now we're down to six single crochets in our round. I'm going to go ahead and mark that last stitch as soon as I figure out where I put the stitch marker. And then we're going to go ahead for rounds four, five, and six. It's just single crochet in each stitch around and fasten off leaving a long tail for sewing. We don't want to have to use extra yarn to sew our little appendages on. Here is my little horn, all completed, and of course we're going to make two of those. The last thing I want to stitch on camera is the tail. And it says using main color, which is our big skein, chain nine, starting in second chain from hook, single crochet in each chain across. So once again, we talked about this a little bit earlier when we were joining the legs, but I like to work in the back or the bump of the chain because I think it's neater. So I'm going to flip that chain over so I can see the back. I'm going to skip the one that is closest to the hook. And then I'm going to go in the next one. So I'm inserting my hook in that back bump. Yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over and draw through two to finish my single crochet. I'm going to do that all the way across. Let's do that one more time. Go into that back bump. Make sure you get through all the strands of yarn. Yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over and draw through two. So here I am at the end of the tail. I'm going to cut the yarn and pull it through to end off. Now you have two options here. I'm going to tell you which I prefer. We are going to sew this onto our little giraffe friend. But we're also going to take some of the little leftover bits and bobs that we have 
and put some little fringe on the end. So what I like to do is use this side to attach it to the giraffe because that also helps me hide those tails. And then I'm gonna wait and put the fringe on after I'm done sewing all my other little bits and bobs on because that way I can use um, little snips of yarn that are left over from attaching appendages rather than cutting fresh yarn off the skein. <gasps> Let's start with this horn. And the same way I sew this horn on is going to be the same way I sew the arms on. So the instructions tell me to go between rows 35 and 37. And I know that 37 was my last round. So it's telling me to go between rounds 35 and 37. But honestly, again, more of an art than a science. As long as you're happy with the placement, you're perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do, you can pin this into place if, if you want, but I'm sort of digging into the stitches of the head and then making sure I catch every stitch of that last round. I want to make sure that lay is nice and even. And I'm sewing that on pretty tight. So each little amigurumi that you make is going to have its own personality, its own face, its own proportion. So use the instructions of the pattern as a jumping off point, but if you decide you want your horns or your arms or your ears or something somewhere else, that's okay too. You're making your own friend. So here I am going for this last stitch. Making sure it's pretty tight and it's standing up, which it is. And then I'm just going to weave that end in. For our muzzle, we're going to do something very similar, but I'm going to take some of my leftover stuffing and kind of smush it in there. I know we were joking earlier about how tiny the package looked when I opened it, but as I said, once the air gets to it, it uh, expands quite a bit, so I'm going to have to kind of squish it <laughs> to get it all back into where I want it. So I'm just going to hold that in. Again, if you want to use a pin, you can do that. Tuck all that stuffing in. And same deal as we did before. I'm going to dig into the actual giraffe. I have that tail needs to be a little shorter. And then I'm going to go up here and grab a stitch. And keep tucking that stuffing under as you go. The stitching doesn't show up. I mean, these stitches are really super easy to hide, and that's because we're stitching all in the same color that we did our crochet in. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish sewing my muzzle on, and then we're going to talk about the embroidery. There's our muzzle in place, and I forgot we have to put the tail on. <laughs> So again, there are instructions on there for you to pick a specific row, but or round rather, but what I did is I just threaded my tails. And I'm going to use those to sew the tail on so I don't have to waste a bunch of other yarn. And same deal, I'm going to weave it in and out of a couple of stitches and leave my big tails inside, inside with the stuffing. Now I can use these little bits and bobs and some other ones if I have them laying around or I can cut some off of the Let's start with him. I can cut some off of my skein. I'm going to insert my crochet th hook through here and grab my little string and pull it through. And then put my cut ends through my loop on my hook and give it a little tug. And then I can spread that all out. I could get a comb if I wanted or a little flicker brush. I could put some more on there if I wanted. I'm going to trim them even. <laughs> and 
And there's my little embellishment on my tail. Now once I have all of my parts assembled, I have two little bits of embroidery to do. One is the face. And again, if you follow along with the pattern, it tells you exactly where you can put your eyeballs and your smile and your eyebrows and your nose, but I like to just wing it a little bit. And much like we were doing with our main color yarn, I'm bringing my needle through the back of those stitches because this is my, uh, my other color contrast, my other contrast color, my other black that we're using to embroider our face with. There's no real place to knot it or anchor it, so I'm bringing it behind the stitches and pulling it just until it's inside of the work. And I want to make sure that I don't want to uh, pull it so tight that it pops out. Now, the other thing I want to point out is where you start. And it kind of doesn't matter whether you start, I'm actually going to move this over one. It doesn't matter if you start with the eyeballs or the smile or the eyebrows or whatever. But because I'm trying to anchor this thread where I want it, I like to start in an area where I'm going to put a couple of stitches. And for the eyeballs, I like to go over at least two times. So there's one. There's two. I think we're good there. And then I'm going to bring my needle down into the muzzle. But by starting my embroidery in an area where I'm going to go over the same stitch a couple of times, it's going to help anchor my cut end, which is hiding in there. So we have sort of a little nostril going on here. And again, you can do whatever kind of a face makes you happy. You don't have to do it the way we do it. And then this guy has a little smiley face going on here. There's my other nostril. And uh, to make him smile, I'm just going to I'm going to follow the curve of that stitch. Let's see. Maybe a little back stitch. I'm going to go over here. Over here. Now, let's see, I have to go up here, get my other eyeball in. I want it to be sort of parallel with the first one that I put in. And you see, you have plenty of the black, so if you want to experiment, do some other kind of a face, that's totally fine. You have plenty of materials to do it with. And I'm going to do two strands, and then let's see. Way up top, we have a little diagonal eyebrow. <laughs> There's one. Bring my needle over. Let's try here. It's funny, a lot of people are really put off by the embroidery on the amigurumi, but a couple of things. One is, again, more art than science. There are no embroidery police. They're not going to come and get you and tell you you did it wrong. And two, as long as you have a face that you're happy with, you did fine. And three, if you really hate it, you can pop your needle off the end, unpick it, and try again. So to uh, finish that up, I'm going to do what we did before. I'm going to bring it under, run it through a couple of stitches towards the back because I don't really want to see that black coming through. I can put, whoop, I almost choked him. <laughs> don't want to do that. Give him a little tug. Oh, I made the black pop out. But if I was doing this for real, I would make sure that didn't show. Give it a little clip and let it recess. If you have some of the color A, that dark brown left after you have finished your 
horns. Make sure you've crocheted both of your horns first because you're going to need it there. You can also add these little V stitches to mimic the brown spots that a giraffe might have. And you can just make as many as you have yarn for. If you only have yarn for one and two, then that's all you have to do. And they may not be perfectly symmetrical, but that's okay. They probably wouldn't be perfectly symmetrical in nature either. So here are our little friends, the one that I made earlier and the one that we made on camera. And I hope you had a wonderful time making Bridget the Giraffe with us here at Red Heart. And once again, I'm Mary Beth Temple from Hooked for Life Publishing, and I thank you so much for your kind attention. We'll see you again here real soon. Bye-bye.